hello it's Sarah and I'm working on this picture frame I know it's polymer clay Tuesday but I am I had to get my hair cut and colored today and I'm just getting home and it's um, I just had enough time to do a little uh, painting video so I think I'm gonna do the polymer clay tomorrow all right that being said um, this frame I painted this in 05 and I'm just painting up a couple of them I have them um, they're the dollar frames from Michaels. I did these two. Um, I wanted to share a couple of things about this frame. Um, real quick, I've already <clears throat> done the background. Uh, I slip slapped some color on there and traced on my pattern um, and base coated everything. So I really just wanted to do a little bit of floating. But I also wanted to share um, this technique that I like to use for um, and I call them bricks because they're not really checks they're more of a half a half a square they're more rectangular so I'm using a, re a really nice flat brush this is a number 10 but it's an American painter and they're all different each company um, they don't keep their the size is always different depending on the company but I've got some water in my bristles and I'm just loading this brush up with my middle value pink. I have a, I have three values of pink that I'm using for this piece. And so I'm using the middle value and I've just, I'm just going to put some checks on here and I'm going to start, uh, kind of on the bottom and just pull and let the brush do the talk in here. Really simple. You know, you could um, stencil these on. That would be perfectly fine. But why not just use a brush and make these little checks? Um, you know, these look a lot darker than the very first frame I did. But um, that's okay. Uh, maybe I didn't water my paint down. It actually is a color called peony, and I didn't have peony. So I'm using raspberry, I think. Yeah, raspberry in the ceram coat, um, Delta ceram coat. So um, Maya's playing um, uh, Jurassic Park on the Wii. So that's what all the screaming is about, I promise. Um, so yeah, so that's basically <clears throat> a really quick and easy way to do checks. And you don't have to do them uh, all over the place. Like it's just for a little added. So I could do three, but I could just do two here maybe and skip it. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect. And as I say that, I take some off. But, um, so the next technique I'm going to do is going to be uh, floating. And I have been a decorative painter for about 15 years, I want to say. Um, and so these are techniques that I learned based on that style of painting. So someone else designed this. This pat pattern happens to be Sonia Richardson and I've painted a lot of her stuff. Um, she's a lovely woman and thankfully she's uh, clever and creative and creates these beautiful things for me to paint. So um, I use the techniques that I was taught um, based on that. So I'm using her pattern, her colors, but I didn't have a lot of the colors, but um, we're going to start by shading these uh, hearts and the flower. The flower right here, I'm going to zoom in. And the first shading is going to be with that middle value. And then we're going to come back with the darker and uh, really make it pop. So I am loading my brush and I'm just going to add some color to the petals up against the center. There's a hair on that. Hopefully, so I'm sorry, I, I'm bumping into the um, tripod. 
I put the color up against the center and just pull it across and I'm going to go on the back petal too. Follow the shape and pull it around. I'm going to take it off Hey, my turn it down. Sounds it sounds really scary. Um, she might not be able to because she's focused. So I have color all mostly on. All right, I'll have to show you how I'm loading the brush. That's a big part of it. So let me do that. Um. I have water on the brush and paint and the paint is floating across the bristles that's why I I think that's why they call it a float um, because the paint is actually floating across the bristles so let's come over here and we'll do a little floating lesson I'm in the water I'm blotting on my paper towel I corner load the brush so now I have paint on one corner and I'm going to put the paint down. This is a paper palette. It's kind of like almost like a wax paper, but it's different. And I'm pushing the paint into the bristles so that it goes from dark to water. So it fades out into water. And this is about a 3 8 inch or yeah, 3 8 inch angle brush. I like angle brushes. So that's loaded. I'm going to come back over here and hopefully I'm going to stick the paint side of the brush into up against the petals and the water will then be towards the outside. And this is called a mop brush and I just mop the water's edge with that. These I happen to be a heavy hand as well, so I actually really load up my brushes. I have a lot of stuff on my brush. I can I can probably do all these petals with one load because I have so much paint and um, water. And I just follow the shape of that petal and mop the water edge away. I'm going to let that dry and we're going to go over to these hearts and do the same thing. I'm going to shade probably all the way around it with this color first. I'm going to switch to my bigger, my 5 8 or uh, yeah, 5 8 inch angle. And I'm loading it the same way. I blot, I corner load so I have paint on the corner. I put it down on my palette and I push the bristles down into it. And then when I come over to my piece, I put the paint edge, this is water, that's paint, up against the piece, slide it around. I have so much paint on my brush, it's crazy. I think I need less because I really didn't want it to be that dark. But that's what being a heavy hand is. It means that I have a lot of color on my brush. I mean, it looks good, so. I don't really, I don't know, I'm just going to leave it, but in general, you don't need that much color. I'm going to do this heart the same way. I'm corner loading, I'm coming over here, pushing the paint into the bristles, and you can see the water. See the bubbles there? I'm going to blot a little bit more, and just so it's not too wet, do the same thing to this heart, and I'm putting the color up against that edge. I'm really in a bad angle. Ugh, I went out. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that off just because I can do it better. And I'm just using a wet wipe to get that off. I just want to. I'm gonna re. When you paint, make sure um, make sure that you're holding the piece in the best possible um, position for you to get this. So like, as you can see, I've zoomed back out because the tripod is actually right here and the frame, I couldn't get in there the right way. So now I have the perfect angle to put my brush down, 
scoop it around along the edge of that heart and I'm turning my brush to keep the paint along the edge and the water to the inside so that I can uh, mop the water's edge and I'm tucking it up against this and then I'm going to feather it out. And I like that it left that, le that line there, but that's where I put my brush down. I like that because it's a heart, like I'm kind of, I'm almost going for that. And the reason I have so much color is because I'm using my bigger brush. If I went to my smaller brush, I won't be able to make it as wide because there's not as many bristles, but I like it like that. So let's make sure, yeah, I'm going to do this one. I know you can't really see the shape of the heart because I've erased all of the um, tracing lines. But it's basically that side. <coughs> I'm going to do the same thing with this um, butterfly up here. I have some raw sienna. And you know what? I just loaded this big brush up with raw sienna and so that means I'm going to have a lot of color. I don't really need that much, but it looks pretty, so that's why. Really, I'm, I'm just saying I could use a smaller brush to get less color. Because I load this big brush compared to this one. I mean, it's not that much bigger, actually. But, um, so that's that. I'm going to put the dark blue on the outside edge. I'm going to do my, um, leaves. The leaves, I need a dark green for that, the evergreen. And it's not completely opaque, but this shading is going to cover up all that. So I'm not worried about it. And I am going to use my smaller brush for this because I can always go back in. I'm just going to establish some lines here and so hopefully you guys will be able to see what I'm doing. I'm loading the brush again. Um, I have to go underneath here. That's good. I'm going to go underneath here and you can trace your lines back on uh, I don't need to it's just easier to not have to erase everything because I kinda I've painted several of these in a, in a row so I kinda know where I'm going with this this color like where the um so I'm gonna go right from this edge up over to here and that is kind of I, I went off a little again it's I'm at a weird angle but I'm gonna fix that I'm gonna take a q-tip and just go up a little higher the angle was a little off Now I just need to establish the stem. The stem goes down both sides, but I'm going to let that dry. You always need to let um, floats dry in between because if you don't, uh, you'll pick up what you just did, and that is annoying. So the other thing I wanted to say is floating is a tricky um, technique. Don't expect to do this the first time. It isn't something that just is a natural type thing to do um, so I mean I've done this for years and years and years but I think if you practice you should be more successful each time um, w when I first started I mean obviously um, I wasn't great at it but you get better talk about this mop brush this is a Maxine's mop I 
think they sold these at AC Moore at one time, but you can get them online. Maxine Thomas developed these, and because um, she's a floater, her her style is very much. Uh, she gets all her shading and highlighting with floats. Um, so having the right tools is also important. Um, this palette paper that I'm using is a great, I mean, I, I could kind of load my brush on my um, Tim Holtz mat here too because um, it has that slick surface. So use that if you want before you uh, go out and get a wet a paper palette and I'm keeping the color edge up against the edge of the heart and I'm see how I'm turning my brush so that the water stays on the inside of the heart and then you just pull it down and then I'm just gonna mop from the water's edge in to just soften it up a little bit and I have one more heart and then the darker color I'm just gonna do the darker pink in a couple areas I'm not gonna do the whole uh, heart it just gets way too dark and I, I'm dark enough I, I always do everything dark so I figure I'll cut myself a break and so I'm going to do a light switch cover tomorrow, I think, in polymer clay. Um, we just redid my son James's room, and I just thought it needed a light switch cover to jazz it up a little. So there you go. So that is just a little floating sampler. Um, I'm going to go in with the darker color now, the Mendocino and show you how I really make these um, petals pop on the flower. And I'm going to use my my smaller angle brush. This is a 3 8 inch. I'm still corner loading and I'm blending it into my brush or pushing it the color into my brush. And then I'm going to just hit it I'm going to go in a little and kind of make it look like it's um, got a lip to it or you know like the petal is hollow or something. You know what I'm trying to say, right? Give it some dimension. I can't get this in the shot. Hold on. Here we go. And here are those dinosaurs. So that kind of makes it look like, and then when you do the, this is so fun for me. I love doing this. And I'm going to do the same thing on the back petal and just stick the color. Oops. I didn't, I kind of couldn't see what I was doing and I went over the other petal. Don't want to lose the shape. All right, we'll do one more section. Every time I turn my camera off and on, it's 10 minutes. So I guess I'll do one more 10 minute little bit. Uh, making sure I'm in the shot. I think that's a hair. I don't know. And I'm kind of trying to keep the color toward the center. Like I don't, I don't want it to come out to the top of the petal too far. But that has to do with how much paint I put on, and I always put on a lot of paint. But I can push it back in. See how I just kind of pushed it back. Hopefully you can, and I'm not. I'm going to reload this with just a tiny bit of paint. Try not to put a ton of paint. I 
And I'm just pushing, taking these bristles and kind of pushing the water back. So that looks pretty good. We're going to um, outline it all in white and everything. So this is what the flower will look like eventually. Isn't that pretty? So um, this is the techniques that I use. So for the hearts now, I'm going to go back in with a darker pink, but I'm not going to do it everywhere. I'm just going to do it on the left side for now. I'm just going to, and I'm using the smaller brush. So I hopefully you'll be able to see the other color as well as this dries. That was a terrible, I didn't have enough water at all. While it's still wet, you have time to maneuver, but once it starts to dry, and I have a fan blowing right on me, I'm not crazy about that because I totally went out of lines over here. There we go. Um, and like down here, I totally went out of lines too. And you can take it off and just like um, <clears throat> straighten up your lines a little bit. And it's always harder for me when I'm on camera. So I'm going to do this. This is a good angle for this medium uh, heart. And I'm using the darkest pink what I have, which is actually called Mendicino Red. And I'm loading my brush. This is the smaller angle. I'm going to slide it up this way. Hopefully you can see the water and the color. And I'm just going to leave it in that corner. And I think I'm going to do the other side of the heart the same way, like right here. Just this little section. Because it's going to get highlighted too. I'm going to pull that right there. That looks good. So let's see, maybe I'll just do that over here too on this big one, like just the top area. I'm just loading my brush right here. And just make that pop a little. And then for this guy, I think I'm going to do the same thing. So basically on the left side and then a little bit on the um, right side, like to the left of the right side. So right here. And then... Even though I went out of lines a little, it looks good. I'm just using, I didn't even reload because I have so much water and paint on the brush. I can do it. All right, so that looks good. All right, let me just do another um, down this flower, um, the leaves. I'm in my dark green. A little more paint. I really want to establish. So I want to go from there to there. Do you think I can do that without a line? Stencil it on there or uh, it's a little crooked. I think I'm going to fix it this way. I'll fix that because we're going to do a couple more. Um, definitely keep coming back and forth with this color and get it the way I want it. Um, I have so much water on my brush. So I'm kind of trying to follow this stem 
but it's not straight, I guess. I could make this thicker up top, that's all. Like this probably just needs to be thicker to match the bottom. Do you know what I'm saying? But, I mean, it's on there. Let's see what it looks like. I can do a little bit of blue. It's getting there. I still have to play with this, the leaves on the stem a little. But this little guy needed um, blue. The same blue that I used for the body. I think it's called Dark Night. I'm going to put right on the edge of this leaves. Leaves. I always call wings leaves. I mix wings and leaves up all the time. And it kind of turns it green when you put it on top of the yellow. Which is fine with me. I'm happy when they tell me what color to use because then I don't have to think about it. I have so much paint from painting for all those years. And, that, and I put little vein lines on them too before. Alright, so that's basically it. We're at 8 minutes. I'm going to fix this right down here. And I hope you like this. I hope it was helpful. Um, but practice makes perfect. You have to practice. You have to do it a lot. And I think you could just do some hearts, really. Um, hearts are a simple enough shape that you could just play around with hearts. I also, I'm going to shade um, somewhere on this too. Probably on the bottom. I'm going to come up this side. I cannot see what I'm doing. I am totally behind this camera. Anyway. Alright you guys, I'll be back tomorrow with Palmer Clay. Alright, thanks for watching.